guys, it's Dave, and yesterday was a very exciting day for Rocket Lab shareholders. Not only was the stock up 10 plus percent, pushing to over $30 per share in the after hours, but Rocket Lab announced one of their biggest acquisitions to date. This is Geost, a payload solution company, and it could have big implications for the future of Rocket Lab. So is this a good deal? Why did they make it? What does this maybe signal Rocket Lab is thinking about doing in the future and how they're positioning themselves? What's next for the stock? That's what we're talking about today. Before we dive into that, if you're new here, please do consider hitting that subscribe button as it really helps out the channel so much. And if you're not new here, those likes and comments always help out as well. So thank you so much for that. All right, with that out of the way, let's dive into Rocket Lab's latest acquisition. Okay, so first of all, what is Geost? Well, they are an Arizona-based electro-optical input and infrared payload development and manufacturing company and a provider to high-priority national security satellites. The company focuses on survivability and resiliency, intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance sensors, mission autonomy, and laser communication. So that laser communications bit might be a little puzzling to you since Rocket Lab did just buy a laser communication terminal provider in Maneric. A couple quick thoughts on that though. Maneric is a European-based company. This is a US-based company and may be well positioned to supply the US market in light of the situation around tariffs and the like as well this company i believe also does ground stations and not just the terminals that go on the spacecraft so i do think they could be complementary as opposed to two competing products there in terms of the details of the deal rocket lab is acquiring geost for 275 million in a mix of 125 million dollars in cash and 150 million in privately placed shares of rocket lab common stock which would mean dilution for us but i think it's still a great deal plus up to 50 million dollars in potential additional cash earnouts tied to revenue targets so if geost you know hits certain targets in terms of how much money they bring in in the next couple years they might get the additional 50 million their current shareholders that is the acquisition is expected to close in the second half of 2025 so that's actually pretty short order to be honest i did expect their next acquisition to be something more in the vein of rf antennas or phased array antennas and communications that might uh, show their hand a little bit in terms of a future commercial communications constellation and this is not that but i do still think it's a very smart and strategic move and more than anything i think it's going to show the you know rocket lab does plan to have several different applications in mind with their own assets on orbit and when we talk about the rocket lab constellation like it's going to be only one that isn't really the right way of thinking about it i think there's going to be several different app uh, constellations that do different things and this will play a major role perhaps in one of them in the future very big for government and defense and couldn't have come at a better time absolutely perfect timing we're going to get into that in a second now, Rocket Lab did have a little bit of a presser with Peter Beck and Adam Spice talking about the acquisition and released a small presentation. If you're interested in checking it out, it is on Rocket Lab's investor relations website. Interesting things Rocket Lab did say in their presentation is that this positions them very well as a disruptive prime contract for U contractor for U.S. national security missions, creating a new category of offering, which is optical systems within their vertically integrated end-to-end -end solutions. And uh, they think that with their ability to scale businesses, they'll be able to expand Geo's product line and manufacturing to enter new markets and programs, a lot like they're doing with Moneric and a lot of those other acquisitions, Sinclair and all the other ones that they've already bought and significantly expanded upon and uh, really, you know, scaled those businesses. Uh, talking national security they say well they already have launch pretty much they already have a lot of the spacecraft in terms of the satellite buses i'd have to agree with on the payload side they didn't really have so they were having to subcontract out payloads but they're looking to bring a lot of that in-house as well so unlocking for this this deal does unlock on the payload side of things missile warning and tracking as we talked about as well as tactical intelligence surveillance and reconnaissance earth observation space domain awareness so around you in orbit as opposed to just looking at on the ground um, well positioned for sda which we're going to talk about a lot in a minute 
and the Golden Dome as well, because that's been in the news a lot lately, and the government's looking to pump a lot of money into investment for this Golden Dome Defense Initiative, and we're going to talk about that a little bit soon as well, but I think it's a, a very well-timed acquisition indeed. And they're already trusted with national security, having contracts, already having contracts with the Space Development Agency, U.S. Air Force, Space Force, and intelligence agencies, and a, a very skilled team of 115 trained professionals. Uh, the transaction details we did kind of talk about, but an interesting point in this presentation is that Geost is expected to be neutral to modestly accretive to adjusted EBITDA when that closes in the second half of 2025, meaning that at least on an adjusted EBITDA basis, they're already positive, so they're not going to be a cash burner like you have to expect. Moneric will be over the short term until Rocket Lab gets them scaled up and turned around, which I'm sure they will, of course, but immediately this will be adding money to the bottom line, at least on an adjusted EBITDA basis. I'd love to have more details on their current backlog and what revenue numbers they're doing, all that kind of stuff, but I don't have that for you as of yet because this is a privately owned company, not, you know, company reporting results every quarter. So, uh, first of all, let's talk about the SDA and how this really helps out Rocket Lab very, very quickly. So, you probably already know that Rocket Lab got their biggest contract ever from the SDA, a contract to build about 18 satellites for 515-ish million dollars, or half a billion as they like to say, and that was for Tranche 2. Now, Tranche 3 recently was paused by the government amid budget uncertainty, which caused me a lot of concern because I thought for sure Rocket Lab would be going for that next gen Trans 3. But wait, there is another. There is another. <laughs> yeah, so the Tranche 3 of the transport layer, which is communications, was paused, but the tracking layer is actually the satellites that perform the sensing and track missiles and objects like that for defensive purposes, as opposed to just the communications. These satellites are actually a higher value. So in the previous layer, uh, sorry, Tranche, <laughs> Tranche 2, uh, those went for like 18, sorry, $800 million for 18 satellites, I believe, as opposed to $500 million for the transport layer. So this, um, could be even bigger. And if you notice this date, very key right here, responses to um, basically apply for this RFP were due on May 22nd. So that's when Rocket Lab would have to submit their bid to the government to build out these satellites. And Peter Beck did also say in their earnings call that they were focused on the tracking layer, which again, could practically double the backlog of the entire company on its own if they landed it, sitting right now at about $1 billion. And I would imagine if they land a contract, we're looking at at least $800 million. So that would be absolutely massive to the overall company. And why is this date important? Well, if we go back to when the contract closed. Won't, wouldn't you know it's on May 22nd, 2025. So even though we just found out about it, I guess it the agreement happened a few days ago. And that means that Rocket Lab, I'm sure, you know, included in their bid that they have now in-house, the sensors and payload for this tracking layer. And not only that, but Geost has already worked on the tracking layer previously with Sierra Space, so their technology is already accepted and proven for this program, meaning that that's just another item Rocket Labs brought in-house and should really strengthen their bid, which I thought would already be very strong. So I, to me, it seems like a no-brainer that Rocket Lab would get at least, you know, one section of this next-gen tracking constellation. And if they do, backlog almost doubling immediately that makes the transaction worth it immediately to me and that's regardless of you know the current customers geost has and and other future opportunities rocket lab could have so that is absolutely amazing and very major for rocket lab 
immediately. Of course, there's other factors to consider. Um, by the way, Peter Beck saying it really is a logical addition to a vertically integrated national security offering, and I couldn't agree more. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about big picture after this, but just to get into some of the contracts and things that GIST is doing in the short term. There's also something else, which is that space forces um, currently focus a lot on, you know, detecting missiles, looking at things on the ground, troop movements, what have you. But now they also do want to focus more on other things in space, making sure nothing's getting close to them, nothing might hit them, cause any collisions or what have you. Um, so this one arm of the Space Force, I believe, wants to make sure their satellites can now spot d dangers nearby. And Geost is already working on this with Impulse Space, so this could be a big area of growth in the future as well. Uh, their sensors would play a role in that. Of course, this is, I think, just a small like development contract, but could potentially signal big things ahead on that front as well. Uh, next up, talking about the Golden Dome, a massive initiative that could end up costing something like $175 billion over the span of several years, but President Trump is apparently determined to get it going during his term. So that's in the next three years. So that's a lot of investment in just a couple years. And they've already passed through the, I think, Congress and Senate right now, the first $25 billion of spending on this initiative. So Peter Beck was asked in the last earnings call about Golden Dome. And he said, firstly, on Golden Dome, yes, we intend to be a significant player in there. We're already established ourselves as a prime contractor into national security programs. And, um, the change that they've recently gone through in the structure of the company into a, a different corporation with, you know, sub companies basically better enables them to address some of these very important national security programs. So he feels very good about Golden Dome capabilities in the future as well. Beyond that tracking layer, which is massive in its own right, when we talk about Golden Dome funding, this $25 billion that has been uh, assigned so far, we're looking at $2 billion for military satellites with air moving target indicators. To me, um, that is addressable by this GEOS acquisition. Uh, $500 million for expanding national security space launch infrastructure. Rocket Lab's car kind of already involved in that. $400 million for uh, hypersonic test bed. Rocket Lab's already involved with that as well with their haste. $7.2 billion to develop, procure, and integrate military space-based sensors. That's a big one, a uh, massive one that GEOS could help Rocket Lab address. They put their sensors on their existing satellite buses and then they really have um, space-based sensors that could address some of these government needs. Uh, so a lot of potential funding coming and some of this other stuff, you know, you could debate whether Rocket Lab could address it or not developing space base and boost based phase missile interceptors. I don't know if that's really in Rocket Lab's wheelhouse, but I'd love to hear your thoughts as well down below as some of these other items as well. So, uh, potential big boost in contracts on the military and defense side coming Rocket Lab's way. So for those reasons, I think Geost is amazingly timed and huge for Rocket Lab's prospect in the government and defense sector in terms of getting those contracts. SCA could be massive in the contracts they land. Golden Dome could be massive in the contracts they land. And that is why it's a good acquisition. Now, what I always see Rocket Lab doing is basically getting other people to pay them to learn things and do things they already want to learn to do so that they can then go and use that capability themselves in the future. And I do wonder how this plays into that. Like, it, for example, does Rocket Lab want to operate their own constellation that is providing this kind of awareness and has government customers as a service one day? We've seen SpaceX wants to do something similar with their Starshield and actually own the satellites as opposed to just building them for the government and, and operating it as a service, charging the government a fee every time they use it. Um, that could be a very interesting model for Rocket Lab as well in the future. And Again, just going back to, I think there'll be multiple applications and multiple constellations Rocket Lab goes after in the future, not just one. So we've talked a lot about a communications constellation, and I think that market is still so huge that Rocket Lab will go after it as well 
at some point, but this really does open up the whole defense uh, side in terms of payload and Rocket Lab being vertically integrated to build out that kind of constellation almost completely in-house as payload was really one of the last things that they didn't have on that front. So I would really be interested to hear how you think Rocket Lab could use this technology for itself beyond just building satellites and selling those satellites to governments in the future, as I'm sure they do have plans for that as well. And again, just I think another really savvy move by the management team. Yes, there may be a little bit of stock dilution, but to be honest, I mean, the stock's near all-time highs and at this valuation i'm totally okay with a little bit of dilution for such a important strategic asset coming back in return that will drive future growth for the company uh, much better than having dilution at four or five dollars a share so actually happy that the company is taking advantage of the stock being so high right now and making moves at the right time and getting the best deals possible and best bang for their buck when they talk about issuing new shares. So very bullish on Rocket Lab, very excited with how things are going. The market was quite pleased in the after hours when this was announced, popping several percent. Uh, things did kind of taper off today, but that was mostly due to the overall markets turning red. Rocket Lab still outperforming the overall markets last I checked and just feeling good about the direction of the company and the management. I'd be interested to hear your thoughts on this down below as well. Again, if you haven't already hit that like button and that subscribe button, it's so helpful. So please do consider doing that. And thanks to the channel members for the support as always. Okay, I think that's it for now on this one. I hope you guys have a great day and a great rest of the week. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.